Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm getting excited to play with the new Outlaws of Thunder Junction expansion and today I'm going to go over 10 new infinite or game winning combos. So let's jump in and see what we got. Okay, the first one uses this new card Railroad a Railway Brawler, a 5 mana 5/5 five five, which reach trample. And this ability, which says, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is its power. Now, to instantly win with this card, we're going to have to use the pull part of push-pull. And either either Galta or any big creature, actually just a, two railway brawlers in your graveyard, will um, come back and deal 20 damage themselves. But if you wanted to do more than 20, in case they have a blocker or gain any life, then using a bigger creature will help as well. Um, so imagine that you have uh, the Brawler in the graveyard and the Galta and Mavern in the graveyard, and you cast Pull on them, which returns them both to play with haste. Now the Brawler will give the Galta uh, double its power and, and toughness, essentially, so it'll be a 24-24 trample with haste. If that's not enough, you get to attack with the Brawler also, and that will trigger the Galta and Mavern's first ability. You can put in then a 5-5 five, five, uh, green dinosaur token with Trample. And then the Brawler will trigger again and it'll be a 10-10. So you got a 5-5, five, five, a 10-10 Trample, and a 24-24 Trample attacking all at the same time for uh, 6 mana. So that's how to instantly win with the Railway Brawler. Next up, we've got Girid, Mirror of the Wilds, uh, three mana for a 3-3 three, three haste. And it says, non-token creatures you control have tap. Create a token that's a copy of target token you control that entered the battlefield this turn. Now, the combo here is with, in with dominating uh, vampire to create infinite vampire tokens. Now, you're going to need the dominating vampire out and the Girid out, and then a way to make a token. Um, you could actually play the Dominant Vampire and the Token Creator um, at the same turn. but um, And actually, you could have Geared, too, because Geared has haste, so you could do, play them all in the same turn. But if you have those out and you make a token copy of the Dominating Vampire, then next you're going to tap the Geared to create a uh, another token. So now you have three Dominating Vampires, which lets you untap the Geared which lets you tap it again to create another copy of the Dominant Vampire, which this untaps the Garret, which then lets you tap it to create another copy of it. So then you get infinite vampire tokens, all with haste, and you can attack for infinite damage. Okay, next up we've got this Forsaken Miner. I think a very strong card is going to see play in a lot of different uh, archetypes here. But the infinite damage combo with it... Um, is that, so first of all, it's the one mana 2-2, two, two, it can't block, and it says whenever you commit a crime, pay a black mana, and if you do, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, by itself, I think it's pretty strong with Goblin Bombardment, just because you can continually commit crimes, you know, pinging your opponent's creatures, paying one black every time to bring it back, or ping their face, bring it back for one black, but if you have Pitiless Plunder, out, then you can go infinite with this. It says whenever another creature you control dies, you get a treasure token. So you can continually, infinitely pay the black mana every time it dies, because you'll get a treasure token, um, and continually do one damage to uh, you could kill all your opponent's creatures if you wanted to, or just go to the face and, and end the game. So that is the infinite combo with Forsaken Minor. Infinite damage. Next up, we've got Rakdos Joins Up, a 5 mana <clears throat> legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with two additional plus one plus one counters on it. And whenever a legendary creature you control dies, uh, deals damage equal to that creature's power to target opponent. So the 20 plus combo damage here is with Yargle and Multani, which has a power of 18 and is a legend. So if it's in your graveyard, if you have a, um, you cast Rakdos joins up, um, then it will return to play with two plus one plus one counters on it, so its power will now be 20. And then any way to sacrifice it will trigger the second ability and do 20 damage to your opponent instantly. So, for example, Tarion's Journal is a sort of zero mana way to just sacrifice any creature. So you could have that out on the on the field and uh, play the Rakdos Joints up, return the Yargle, 20 
If you use Callous Cell Sword, that could do even more damage. Uh, any fling effect would do even more damage. Um, but you don't necessarily need to do more than 20 damage, depending on um, your opponent's life total. But uh, so very easy to kind of set up this combo. I think it's going to potentially see some play. I'm going to ma make a deck around it for sure and see if we can get it off um, on people. So that is the 20 plus fling combo with Rakdos joins up. Next up, we've got the Rush of Dread. You might have seen this one. This one was kind of, uh, pretty popular. And um, It's a three mana sorcery, which says um, you can ignore these first two because we're only going to use the last two, which is a which is add two mana uh, for the spree and target opponent loses half their life rounded up. Now you could use the other modes as well, um, but if you have Bloodletter of Alkalaz um, in play, it doubles that. So doubling your opponent losing half of their life is going to instantly kill them no matter what life total they're at. Um, so uh, combination you could go turn four, Blood Letter, turn five, Rush of Dread with the last mode, instantly kill them. Um, there's also just quite a few ways to search up this combo in black. There's kind of like demonic tutor variants in black now. Um, the new Servant of the Stinger can sacrifice itself to search for any card. Case of the Statue Skeleton can also sacrifice itself. Um, there's other tutors in black. Um, let me know if there's a, a, any others I'm missing. Um, uh, the Beseech, Beseech the Mirror is another pretty good one you could use in this deck. So you could just uh, search up either side of this combo. Um, will it be good? I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's up for debate. These two cards are decent on their own. Um, but being able to, I don't know, it kind of loses to any creature removal. Um, you kind of have to set it up on one turn, Blood Letter kind of being a bit vulnerable. And then the next turn... Cash in the Rush of the Dread. We'll see. It's definitely got potential, and I'm sure I'll try it out and see how it goes. But that's the instant kill combo with Rush of Dread. <clears throat> We've got one last job, um, which is a sorcery for three mana. And it, it says Spree plus two return target creature from a graveyard to the battlefield, plus one return a mount or vehicle card from a graveyard to the battlefield, and plus one return target or equipment card from a graveyard to the battlefield um, and attached to a creature. So uh, the combo here is using Zeotora, which lets you sacrifice any creature at the end of your turn. And it does basically flings. It does damage equal to its uh, power to any target. And then Colossification, which gets plus 2, plus 2. I'm sorry, plus 20, plus 20. <laughs> not plus 2, plus 2. That would not be very good <laughs> if that was the case. Uh, plus 20, plus 20. Um, so if you have any other creature on the, on the field and you have the Zeotora Colossification in the grave, Casting one last job using the first two mode or the first mode and the last mode, um, so six mana to do twenty plus power, whatever extra power uh, the current creature you have uh, in play is. Um, this is legal in Explorer, so you can play it in there or Historic or any uh, format uh, like that. Okay, next up we've got Calamity Galloping Inferno, which is a six mana legendary horse mount. 4-6 haste with this very cool ability. It says whenever um, it attacks while saddled, choose a non-legendary creature that saddled its turn and create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it. Sacrifice a token at the beginning of next end step. Repeat the process once. So um, you, essentially you can saddle this with any creature and then get two additional copies of that creature tapped and attacking. So if you had Blood Letter um, of Alcazaz, uh, again, that card coming up, so maybe you could play this both in the same deck if you wanted to. Um, but if you were saddling this Calamity with Blood Letter, you would <clears throat> get two more Blood Letters tapped and attacking, and you'd have three Blood Letters total in play. So everything would get, I believe this is how it works, because it doubles every time. So you get double, and then four times, and eight times the damage. So each one that gets through for, for two damage would do 16, and then the Calamity itself would do uh, 32 damage if you had that. So that's uh, definitely more than 20 damage. And then Terror of the Peaks is also a nice kind of on-color card that would work with that. You'd saddle the Terror of the Peaks and then you'd get two more Terror of the Peaks and that would trigger um, the first Terror of the Peaks to do 10 and then the other ones I believe would see each other, if I'm not uh, mistaken, and those would each do 10. Um, and then you would be also attacking for 10 plus 4. 
Um, so that would be a lethal attack. So let me know how much damage total that is in the comments if you can figure that one out. Um, math is eluding me right now. Okay. Next up, we've got Wily Duke. Um, it's a three mana, four two with vigilance. It says, whenever it becomes tapped, you gain one life and draw a card. So this is an infinite life and infinite card draw. Um, in fact, I guess it's not infinite life because you'd lose the game if you drew your whole deck, but uh, you can draw your whole deck basically with this combo. Um, so the, the simple one is just Agatha's Soul Cauldron and Seeker of the Skybreak. If you have a Seeker of the Skybreak in your graveyard, Wily Duke can play, tapping the Soul Cauldron um, to give the Seeker, the Wily Duke, the Seeker's ability to untap any creature and you just target itself, tap, untap infinite times, as many times as you want, draw your whole deck if you want, gain a bunch of life. In standard, we actually have like a forensic researcher combo uh, that could use this as well. If you have um, forensic research researcher under the Agatha Soul Cauldron and you give that ability to Wily Duke, you just need another creature would, that has a plus one plus one counter on it. Then they can tap and untap each other infinitely, and you can keep going and draw your whole deck and gain that much life, essentially. So um, some infinite potential here. Uh, and all the cards don't really cost too much. So this might be a fun uh, deck to try out, see if you can get it to work, um, you know, in Commander with the Seeker or in Standard with the Researcher. Um, I'm sure there's other cards that are similar to the Researcher that you could play in older formats as well to make this a bit more consistent. Um, but yeah, some some fun infinite life and card draw potential. Okay, next up we've got the Lotus Ring, which is a three mana equipment indestructible. It gets plus three, plus three in Vigilance, and most importantly, the sacrifice the creature at three mana of any one color equipped for three. So with Fervent Champion, um, and I guess this is also Explorer legal, um, Pioneer legal, and Cole, you can get infinite mana. Um, so turn one, you could play the Fervent Champion, attack if you want to, turn two, play the Cole, turn three, if you play the Ring, you can now equip it to the Fervent Champion because if it's the last ability that says equip abilities that activate it cost three less. Now, once you do that, you can immediately tap it to sacrifice to add three mana of any color. Um, red mana, for example, you'll need to start with, with red mana to continue the loop. Um, and then Cole's first ability says whenever a non-token creature you control dies, if it <clears throat> was enchanted or equipped, you return it to your hand. So now you got three mana floating. There are the Fervent Champion comes back to your hand. You can play it with one of the red mana. You immediately equip it back with the Lotus Ring. Because it has haste, you can tap it again and then add red or any color that you want um, and continue to do this loop. Sacrifice it. goes back to your hand. You're netting two mana every time you're going through this loop. So infinite any type of mana that you want. Um, and then Fireball or... Illness wealth, or <laughs> however else you wanna you wanna finish off your opponent that way. Any X spell would would do, or any sort of way to dump all the mana into it. Okay, and last up we've got Esoteric Duplicator, which creates infinite turns with two different cards actually. So Esoteric Duplicator is a three mana artifact clue, and it says whenever you sacrifice this or another artifact, you can pay two if you do at the beginning of your end step. Create a token that's a copy of that artifact, and then you can sacrifice it uh, to draw a card. So if you have Ugin's Nexus, um, which says that um, if the second ability, if it would be put into a graveyard from the battlefield and set exile it and take an extra turn after this one, this one requires one extra card, any sort of um, way to sacrifice the Nexus uh, at instant speed um, during your end step, because you need to do this during your end step because of um, the way of this is timed that at the beginning of the next end step, you create the artifact token. And you don't want it to actually be in play when you're taking the extra turn because of its first ability that says um, you can't start an extra turn. So you would have these both in play, two extra mana. So you had um, uh, Quark Clan Ironworks in, in play to give you the two mana. So that's kind of a nice setup card. With it, you go to your end step, you sacrifice um, the Ugin's Nexus, pay the two, and then. You would take an extra turn. During that turn, do whatever. During that end step, you'd get a, a token copy of it. Um, and then <clears throat> also during that end step, sacrifice it again. Pay the two, get the token copy, 
get the extra turn and keep going. Um, Mind Slaver is a little easier, and you can actually get this off in um, Limited, from what I understand, because they're both, you could you could pull them in packs and Limited, because this is in one of the bonus sheets, Mind Slaver. Um, but this also is coming to Historic, so that could be pretty exciting. Try to get this off. Um, but Mind Slaver can sacrifice itself to take your opponent's turn, and then you just pay two to get a copy of Mind Slaver, and then you can control your opponent on their turn, do whatever you want, then it's back to your turn, sacrifice again, pay two, control your opponent. So basically you just control, you don't get infinite turns, although you control infinite turns. So um, essentially you're gonna win from there. All right, so that is 10 combos uh, with um, Outlaws of Thunder Junction, the new set coming out. And there's about a week left, I believe, till it is released. So let me know in the comments what combos you are most excited about. Um, any decks that you want to build? Uh, anything I missed with these combos or ways, cards that could enable them, make them easier to get off? Let me know what you want to see in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have an amazing day, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.